Hey everyone, Strainers103 here. Welcome to all you need to know about the Yamato's armor layout. To answer a couple of questions from the previous video, thank you guys for the amazing positive response. I will continue this as a series until I've covered pretty much every single unique armor ship in the game. That pretty much means Kabarosk, Umikaze, gearing for destroyers, and that's about it because everything else is standard armor. Or I, I guess I could just do Japanese you know, destroyers as a whole or something like that. But for the most part, there's a lot of standard armor uh, around. So let's get to it with the Yamato. Standard armor with the Yamato. Thir uh, 32 over here, plus 19 superstructure. That's standard for tier 8, 9, and 10 battleships. Deck armor-wise, we have 50 here and 57. Now, the 57 here is rather important because it means that it will resist the high explosive ammunition from German 20.3 centimeter guns. Although... When we are broadside though, we need to be careful because this is actually 32, which means that this pretty sizable plate here is vulnerable to being HE'd. Same one angle, this little area here is vulnerable to being HE'd. And these little uh, A mounting barbettes, I guess you can say, for the 25s are counted as superstructure for 19. So there is a fair chunk of armor on the broadside that is vulnerable to HE from IFHE 16 inch guns, and of course from. 8 inch, 20.3, and 203 millimeter gun HE. There's a lot of vulnerable spaces. Again, on the back side, basically in front and behind the turrets, there's 50 millimeters of armor, but again, 32 millimeter standard. Now, as for the Citadel, it is 41 centimeters. I think, I do believe it is the thickest direct plate of any of the tier 10 battleships. But as a major downside, it's just 41 centimeters. It's rather flat. And it's exposed above the waterline, and it's Citadel, so you hit it with a battleship, or a cruiser, you penetrate it, you're dealing full damage to the vessel. So, with that, that's the extremities armor kind of mostly covered. I mean, the gun turret housings, the side 250, most cruisers will go through that at close range. And we need to keep in mind that the Yamato's main gun traverse speed is incredibly slow. 72, degrees, uh, 72 seconds for a full 180 turnaround time, which means that if you do get the get in a close pass with the Yamato, well, if you can't actually citadel it, just shoot it here for a lot of damage, but if you absolutely have to jam the gun turrets, shooting in the side of the turret face is definitely viable, but don't go for the front because 650 millimeters, and it's rather well sloped, so um, a lot of ships are going to struggle to really penetrate the front of that gun turret housing, especially at a close angle like this. If you're dropping shells on it, but, you know, at medium range, then if you do have high enough penetration, perhaps you could jam it. The roof of the turret is way too thick, so we wouldn't even consider that. The 155 centimeter secondary turrets do have a 75 millimeter of a superstructure for the barbette there, but that's really not really that relevant. So hiding the superstructure, we can see that the deck arm here is the full 57. Hiding that, we can see the citadel deck underneath is 200, so you do get a very good bomb deck there. And your, no, your bomb deck 57, your splinter deck is 200, which is very, very good. Let's get rid of the... All the internal stuff actually and just show you the inside of the bow section there you can see the 50 millimeter plating there and here is a part of the uh, the bow section but it's not really that relevant it's a pretty big ship there's no real additional internal platings inside of here which means that you are rather quite vulnerable to being either lol pen from the front or from behind so let's hide that and actually show you the size of the citadel when it comes to lol penning from the front that is 350 millimeters Slope slightly downwards, which means long range shells coming in down like this have a little bit more of an angle to go through, even if they do lull pen, you know, this upper end of the deck here. So it's, at long range, you hit this, it's just going to deflect. But if you can hit the 32 here, or if you have a slight angle, hit the 32 here, as a Yamato that is with 46 centimeter guns, you can lull pen, hit this, hit this, potentially do something. But at long range power bomb, it's not really. And anything beyond 13 kilometers, it's your shell trajectory comes in and it just impacts that plate. So anyways, this isn't really that thick, which means that if you do get caught at an angle such as this, where this 32 millimeter plating is no longer an auto deflector, and we need to keep in mind looking down at it, this is, it's a bow, it's a V uh, shape in on the bow, which means that when you're angled like this, this is actually surprisingly flat. There's 32 millimeters of armor plus 350 millimeters of armor behind it. Slope downwards at a somewhat of an angle, let's say it's about 15 degrees, 15 to 20, 15 degrees angle after normalization. 
So that armor doesn't really amount to much more than 360, 370. I can't be asked to fish out a calculator because it really doesn't matter. It's incredibly thin. Although you're upper plating over here, you can see the um, the uh, sloping of the, uh, the slopes here, 15 and a 40. So at a flat broadside impact angle like this, that probably amounts to around about 600-ish, I would assume. But then again, if you do have a flat broadside, just shoot it. It's for the most part, if you have a cruiser, you have a 450 millimeters penetration, you'll easily go through uh, this without any major problem whatsoever. Even at a slight angle, here for 450, you don't necessarily need complete flat broadside and insert the gun in it. But yeah, that's really all we have to say about the Yamato's armor layout here. The barbettes inside are rather well protected. And, you know, if you want to destroy the gun turrets when you're doing a close pass, just shoot the magazine in here and you'll destroy number one. You can shoot the um, the main belt here and destroy number two. So there's not really much of a, uh, a, a point in actually, you know, trying to target the barbettes when you might as well as a battleship just go up and delete the ship off the face of the earth to begin with. So with that, Yamato does have the worst arm layout of any of the tier 10 battleships. I don't really think there's... Actually, there is one additional thing to uh, cover. Not many people know, and it's not really an easy thing to contest. But you can see this little bit of ship underneath here. You might see it here. It's actually to an extent modeled. You can see that it, it does appear to be modeled. Which means that if you are able to, as another, say, a, a Montana or something that doesn't necessarily just lull pen, if you lull pen, it just shoot it here. But if you're able to drop a shell there at some kind of a medium range, you can actually still go through, impact this at a medium, me, medium-ish kind of range, you'll have the impact angles to hit that properly, through here, through the the, uh, the hangar side, the plating here, and actually be able to get a bit of a weird random citadel there. So do be careful of that as a Yamato when you're kiting, you can actually be citadel through the stern like that. Even if the, the enemy ship does not have the caliber guns to actually lull on your 32. And then there's the... Um, there's actually this little bit of an indentation up here as well, so again, that can be all open through if you're completely flat at ass at reasonable long range, but I wouldn't really consider this to be much of a threat. It's Again, it's, it's rather unlikely to be citadel through. You've got much bigger problems to worry about if you let the enemy get close though, so with that, let's actually hop into a training room and uh, demonstrate you this with with a cruiser actually. We're not going to do this with uh, a moving target because the size of everything is just so big that you know that it's not like a small thing that is really difficult to contest. It's a very large thing and it's very easy to get shots on. So let's hop straight to it. All right here we are in a training room with a large amount of uh, target practice Yamatos. First thing I wanted to show is at long range with armor piercing the 32 millimeters of uh, well let's get a close one the 32 millimeters of plating that is uh, basically covering this area here above that of the citadel and try to take a shot at this at a long range broadside Yamato of course if you're in a battleship you can pen that or pen that but as a cruiser if you're able to reliably target that in this case even with a Zao at reasonable long range you can see getting the shell hits in there and that was 10k damage let's do that again couple of times just to see how reliable, around how much damage we're actually able to pick off that. You can see pretty good dispersion there going in, mostly superstructure, but so six and six k something. I think those were mostly on the superstructure, though. So saturation may have uh, started to occur already, but we can definitely see there's still a fair chunk of damage that we're able to dish out. There you go, really horrible dispersion there. But uh, see a few more off. We can take the six point seven kilometer one off here as well. And just see what we're able to do at closer range. Remember, this is still 50, you know, 60 kilometer range we're doing this at. It's still 6k damage. And the Berg will probably fare better there with just higher higher reload and better AP DPM. And you can see, close the target, 10k again, 4 pens, 6 over penetrations. These are all probably superstructure hits that are being just over penned basically. And again, shooting on the upper end of it. I think that was better dispersion there. Almost 13,000. We can see that AP damage at this kind of range can definitely do something. However, we need to be careful shooting the belt. In this case, Zao does not really have enough penetration to go through a Yamato Citadel at this kind of a range. We can see that still 6k damage from penetration and one overpen. However, with the Yamato's armor layout, like I demonstrated earlier in the port, we can see that the area underneath the gun housing, let's just shoot my number one turret here. And oh, look, double Citadel, shoot my number two turret. Oh look, two more citadels. We can see the rear turret 
They may not have the angle to do so. Actually, they in fact they do, and there we go. Nine citadels, and well, that's just one salvo, and most of that Yamato has already been deleted. And this is a 1.5 kilometer range, up to 2.7 kilometer range. I do not believe this is as uh, doable anymore. Nope, it still is doable at 2.7 with the. Uh, if I can actually stop hitting the bow of the um, the other Yamato, but definitely it's it's just a pretty weak armor layout overall, and the Zao does have some pretty good uh, penetration. So I do believe I haven't really fully tested. I don't actually memorize the entire armor penetration scale of the Zao, but uh, again, if that is vulnerable, I wonder what's going to happen to a completely flat broadside so let's just sail up to this complete flat broadside and then just shoot straight into the engineering 41 centimeters of armor slope uh, i'd say around about 10 5 to 10 degrees 5 degrees post normalization so absolutely nothing especially considering the fact that i'm shooting down a little bit into it and it's a pretty sizable target so there we go 10 citadels 54,000 damage half of the health already taken away with two shatters that i'm actually not sure i know exactly where i hit and again, I don't have a battleship, and I'm not at medium-long range, but let's just take the front turrets and, you can see, shoot into the uh, the hangar spacing at the back. You can see it definitely is modeled as a part of the armor layout. We are getting, in fact, a citadel through the end with our rear turrets there. So that is something to be aware of as a, a Yamato player. You don't really want to be kiting away like... Well, you can't... You definitely should kite if you have to kite, but... Uh, just be aware of the fact that you are vulnerable to being citadel through the uh, the rear end of the plating if you are unlucky. It is through this area over there, and of course at longer ranges, we, I mean, I'm not going to be able to citadel like this, but you can see I'm still getting full penetration damage by simply shooting into the rear flat plating of the hangar there on a Yamato. But of course we get in this kind of a position with a Zao, just launch torpedoes at it, something I didn't mention. It is a... 55% torpedo bulge. But again, let's just try to shoot at that, and you can see I am getting penetration damage with 10k by just simply targeting the area with the black armor there. Now, let's just close on this Yamato. 5 kilometers, I'm pretty sure you don't have the penetration, not at this kind of an angle, to be able to citadel. A Yamato, let's just see how close you have to do with it, get with it out to be able to perform that. I, I think it's around about 3.5 to 4 kilometers range. Which the house should be able to do without the moines around about three, but you can always check out penetration curves on forums and uh, such. I'm pretty sure people have posted these uh, numbers, and as far as I'm concerned, there is no RNG with uh, your penetration. You see, I am still getting penetrations. It's the upper 32 mil plating that I am impacting. And there you go, still shatters at 3.6. Well, 3.2 ish now. Uh, still shatters actually, so around about three kilometers, then I suppose we'll be able to sit the Delphi main 41 at a slight angle. I it is slightly angle at the moment. Nope. This is just me being curious. Nope, 2.9. Okay, so we have to get a lot closer than that. Then in the past, this used to be doable at, four, at around four kilometers, in fact, but. Uh, in that case, penetration mechanics might slightly change, and the fact that I'm at a slight angle to it. Okay, still not. Interesting. I guess today I learn. There we go. 2.2 kilometers ish, you'll be able to citadel a Yamato with the Zao. The area over here is about the same in a way, so let's just get a full broadside off at this kind of a range and fail to kill it because dispersion kind of sucked it out. Only four citadels, but then and again. With a battleship, this is going to be much easier, though you do need to be aware, actually, at longer ranges, this isn't actually some kind of uh, guaranteed thing. If you have 17, 18 kilometers plus, as your shells start to drop against the main belt of the Yamato, it's actually surprisingly tanky at range, unless you have sufficient penetration. So if you're in a tier 8 battleship, don't, don't consider yourself uh, too unlucky if you fail to sit the Del or just get a bunch of deflections off a Yamato at long range, even if it's completely broadside. So now, with the high explosive shells going for a Yamato, again, the 32mm side plating with the pretty sizable superstructure means that a couple of first salvos of AG, you send at it before it starts to saturate, can definitely cause a lot of potential damage. You can see almost 8,000 damage with a Zao. Other cruisers with less AG alpha are obviously going to be dealing a lot less damage per individual 
HE shell, but, you know, that's just the Zhao's high HE alpha for you. I think it's 1,122 damage per non-saturated HE hit compared to, for example, Hindenburg's 825, Dimitri Don Sky's 825, I think Des Moines has 926, if I remember correctly. And you can just appreciate the amount of damage that a Yamato definitely can lead at this kind of an angle to HE if you're broadside, but then and again, if they're shooting HE at you, at you like that, you probably should consider yourself lucky, because eventually at some point, they're going to stop doing full damage. Now, if you are, for example, in a bow on cruiser, let's say, at Des Moines, trying to bow on push a Yamato, you don't have slightly less penetration, so I'd say, like, two kilometers, you'll be able to sit the Delta, but you have this absolutely huge bow to shoot at, so if you are completely bow on, just shoot HE at the bow, and you can see 12 hits of 13,400 damage, that is actually surprisingly large amount of damage, and if you have the, the, the uh, DPM of a Des Moines, and you're just sitting there blinking at the bow, you'll eventually actually deal surprisingly large amount of damage, just to be careful, it'll saturate rather quickly, and not all of the health is, of course, focused in that area. But in a balanced situation like this, there really isn't much better to shoot at with HE than, I guess, other than the superstructure like that, if you really want to be cheeky. But if you're in a balanced situation like this, chances are the Yamato is just going to lull in your bow and delete you off the face of the earth. So yeah, again, 32mm arm on the side. Let's just uh, give that in a little bit there. Again, you can see 10 hits for 10k damage. If you know exactly where to shoot a Yamato, you can definitely pick up large amounts of damage with HE if you know the exact 32mm of armor plating there. But if you're in a position to, to target that, you better hope he ain't in a position to target you back because he's definitely going to do a lot more damage to you than you're doing to him just plinking a weight like this if you're unlucky and he lulpens your citadel into your bow. But the Yamato is 40 centimeter. 45 cal guns and the ability to lull pen 32 millimeters of armor. So, yeah, that's really it for the Yamat Force armor layout, at least the main important parts of it. Leave you a bonus clip of a couple of uh, full HP Yamato deletions with some lower tier battleships after this. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll probably cover all the tier 10 battleships armor layouts uh, and then move on to some of the cruisers but i definitely do believe that i'll come try to go through all the ships in the game that actually have uh, some armor that's important to speak of and probably this will include the royal navy cruisers in a way as well to speak about them and their vulnerabilities and how you can actually try to utilize their armor and mobility to your advantage uh, to try to get people to shoot the wrong places but knowing where to shoot a ship definitely is incredibly useful if you're trying to maximize the amount of damage you're capable of uh, of dealing and trying to minimize the time you need to spend dealing this in return. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Some bonus clips for you guys here to watch couple of uh, AP deletions with some lower tier battles at Fuso and Okebe Skyrim Lutia. And after that, I do actually um, pretty much wanted to just add a little bit of an extra note on that AP bomber as well. They'll do damage, but you won't set it out, which means AP bombers are just better. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.